originally we had we had a policy that we adopted back in 1996, and uh, it was meant to you know put some more structure in the financial plan planning process. We wanted to formalize our policies around uh, financial performance measurements, and then we wanted to ensure that we had discipline in the budget and rate setting process, not only you know for the board that was in place then and the management that was in place then, but you know going forward. Then we did a pretty major revision in 2009, uh, and that's the one that's been in place uh, you know since then. We made a few minor revisions in, since since uh, 2009, but it's it's uh, it's mostly been in place for that you know the, the last three years. It took a while. Um, I think it was over about a year period of time where it was an iterative, you know, very deliberate process that we involved our board. The board has uh, a finance committee that's just made up of other board members, but uh, we meet as a finance committee, which allows us to have some more intimate discussions about certain things. And so, uh, over about a year's period of time, a number of different meetings, you know, back and forth about what should be included and all that. Uh, so yeah, the board was very much involved, and then ultimately it was a policy that was approved and adopted by the board. So we cover about seven different areas. Uh, there's a section on general financial policies, and that includes things like the definition of our working capital reserve, um, who pays for system growth, things like that. And we have a section on asset management. And that includes things like um, you know our capital improvements reserve that we set up a few years ago. The third area is investment management. Uh, that was you know, pretty basic, just some industry t industry standard type language in it. Um, the fourth section is on debt management. There, a lot of the performance ratios that we look at are defined in there. You know, our target for debt service coverage ratio, uh, debt burden to asset, and we even have a minimum credit ratings that we uh, we try to achieve. And so that's spelled out in that fourth section. Then we have a section on rates and fees. Uh, we also have a reserve set up we call our rate revenue stabilization reserve. That's defined in that section. And then we cover things like cost of, cost of service principles and setting rates and that sort of thing. Uh, then we have a section we call customer care. And uh, that's where we define our target for the affordability ratio, service affordability ratio. Um, and the last section is just, is just on the budget process, you know, the calendar and when the board gets involved and, and all that sort of thing. I'd say that one of the biggest benefits of having the policy is that you know each year we go through a process of you know obviously the budget process but also of setting rates and so um, in establishing those rates we use a lot of the or the, the measurements that we identify in that policy um, to to help us decide you know how much revenue we need to bring in and and then what rates we need to charge to do that and some of the key drivers are the reserves that I mentioned before. You know, we, we have three, um, and, they, and they like our working capital reserve is that we want to have a minimum of four months of operating expenses on hand, or 20% of the next three years CIP, you know, whichever of those is higher. Um, for our uh, rate revenue stabilization reserve, we're targeting to accumulate 5% of our anticipated water and sewer revenue. And then for um, the uh, uh, capital improvements reserve, that's two percent of net book value of uh, you know of, of assets or of our system. So those reserves are a big key uh, that component that we utilize, especially in that rate setting process. Uh, also, the debt service coverage ratio is a big one, and all of that uh, you know those reserves and those rate and the uh, debt service coverage ratio feed into one of the other measurements, and that is we want to have a, a minimum uh, credit rating with credit rating agencies. So you know all those things help. Uh, help us achieve that. So I would say that um, you know the, uh, the the reserve targets and the debt service coverage ratio are key drivers. And then the final one is uh, the service affordability ratio. One thing that I should probably point out is that this we we publish a what we call a financial management scorecard each quarter. We report to our board and the and the general public a financial report each quarter, and a part of that is the scorecard that I'm talking. About. So those eight or nine measurements that are identified in our policy, we report how we're doing against those. And for the last several years, we've, we've achieved or met all of the, the targets except for that one that you just mentioned, the service support affordability ratio. Because if you're, you know, if you're trying to shore up your reserves, if you're trying to meet a debt service coverage ratio, you know, sometimes that works in opposition to keeping your rates low enough to, to achieve what your target is for service affordability. 
So what it's led to is, um, okay, we can't rate, you can't lower rates low enough to achieve our target. Uh, we can't do anything about the median household income of the area. So it's kind of directed us into looking at other ways to address uh, service affordability. And, and so we've, uh, you know, we've talked about a lot of different things and we, we're trying to target uh, maybe some lower income communities uh, for conservation education and, and leak detection measures. So, you know, if we, if we can't lower rates enough, then we, we try to, we're looking for ways to try to help, um, you know, folks lower their water use, which in effect, you know, reduces their, their monthly costs and helps, you know, towards the affordability ratio. We have actually have talked about our policy with the uh, rating agencies and they seem to be, um, you know, they have a, a sense of comfort that we have that and that we're, uh, you know, that we, we operate according to those policies. In other words, it's not just a policy we have that we don't pay attention to. And uh, our target for the, we want to have at least a double A rating with all the, you know, all the ratings a agencies and, and uh, we, we have achieved that. Back a few years ago, you know, just after the drought, we, uh, some of our reserves slipped, our, um, our debt service coverage ratio slipped below what our target was. I mean, it never was, was so low that we were in danger of violating our, our uh, bond order or anything like that. But uh, we started paying much more attention to it. The rating agencies, you know, emphasized that, that those were a couple of things that were getting in our way of, of uh, being, uh, you know, as highly rated as we wanted to be. So, yeah, the, the rating agencies have seemed to respond well to it. During the rate setting process, you know, in the, in the early part of the year, or the calendar year, uh, we, you know, in, in helping the board step through how, what we need to do, we put up, um, you know, different scenarios. You know, the board might, we might come to the board and say, we recommend this as a rate increase, and the board might come back and say, you know, I, I you know, <laughs> we need to do something different. And so we talk about and, and, and explain in detail, if we do, you know, if we do a rate adjustment in that scenario, here's what it means. You know, our debt service coverage ratio is not going to be met, you know, et cetera. So, during that rate setting process, this really does insert some discipline to where we, you know, we make sure that we're still focused on keeping the financial stability and sustainability of the organization in place. The second example, I, you know, I mentioned earlier, and that's that to continue the continued focus on that affordability ratio as a measurement that we we look at frequently. Um, you know, it, it has created some discussions and some conversations and and some efforts that I don't think we would have we would have been as conscious of had we not had this. I'd say the biggest advantage or the, the biggest thing that, that we did that ended up being an advantage was involve the board along the way uh, as a part of the process. We didn't, you know, develop something and then present it to them to say, you know, hey, do you approve this or, or not approve it? They were actually a part of the process. And so not only did that, I think, end up, help us end up with a better product, but it also created buy-in on, you know, on, on the part of the board. And even though that was, you know, maybe the, the most the recent revision was three or four board boards ago. The current board still, I think, has a level of respect and buy-in into that because their predecessors were involved in the process.